Uh, hi, I'm Johannes. I'm uh, working with WD Research as well, um, mostly on ButterFS. Um, uh, and I'm going to talk about how we are trying to close the gap between regular ButterFS, as everyone knows it, and uh, the one we have for some devices, because there are still gaps. Some outline, uh, well, some short overview of ButterFS. I think we can skip uh, overview of some devices and some event. Everyone in the room should be aware of it. Uh, a little bit of butter of on zone devices because I'm not expecting everyone to know it. The problem statement for the lessons we learned about RAID 5 and 6 in ButterFS. Some proposed changes I have and how I designed it, the current status of the work, and, and so on. So, uh, on ButterFS itself, it's a copy and write file system um, based on B-trees. It has things like snapshots, sub-volumes, can do transparent compression um, for data, has checksums for data and metadata, can do incremental backups, whatnot. And the cool thing is has it has some logical volume management and rate support in the file system. Currently supporting RAID 0, RAID 1, 10, 5, and 6. Although 5 and 6 are discouraged from use and MakeFS nowadays even warns you to, uh, about it. You can skip that stuff. Um, for zone block devices, support was merged. Well, the initial support for ButterFS on zone block devices was merged in kernel 5.11 that uh, featured the new super block we use. We'll use a block structured super block where we use two device zones um, and like write a new super block to the right pointer. Uh, then we have to align the block groups of ButterFS to zones and have a trivial extent allocated that just looks at the right cache right pointer of that zone. And, Appends to it. Um, since kernel 5.12, we are fully functional. Uh, we are using Sonapend for data writes. So all data is written uh, via Sonapend. So we can get rid of uh, serialization there. Metadata, unfortunately, has to be serialized because of the offsets in the tree. Um, but there's some things we simply can't do uh, on some ButterFS that's like the, the no cow. Doesn't work because you can't do read, modify, write. Um, we don't have uh, support for F allocate yet because ButterFS um, does not do F allocate in memory, but really on disk, which uh, doesn't comply to the sequential write constraint. And as of now, no rate support. Kernel 5.16 added the CNS support. So zone capacity smaller than zone size, respecting the max active zone limits. And we have some garbage collection with auto zone, uh, zone auto reclaim when your zones are mostly dirty. We try to, to compact the zones, uh, reclaim your data, reset the, the old zone. And lots of bug fixes, because apparently file system development isn't trivial. Um, so the lessons learned from the current rate implementation is there's a disconnection of the file extent layer or the logical address space in ButterFS and the rate layer, like the physical address space. Um, for RAID 5.6, there's the, the, the substripe um, updates are in place doing read, modify, write. That creates a write hole. And it's not possible on some ButterFS anyway because it's using read, modify, write. Then uh, copy and write doesn't, uh, well, the, the layer that does copy and write has no idea um, 
about the volume setup. So if it's working on a RAID or on a single device, um, and it needs to, well, the solution we are coming up needs to work with um, no call call systems as well. Another problem is uh, the implicit data placement we have in in RAID. For example, with a a RAID one file system, we are always uh, expecting the data in both mirrors to be placed at the, exactly the same offset of the block group start, which obviously with Zona Plant we can't guarantee at all. So it doesn't work either. And a uh, general rate problem is like the rebuild stress. So if your uh, rate array goes down or one drive in the array goes down, you need to rebuild it, which puts a lot of pressure on the other drives, uh, increasing the likelihood of them dying and then all your data is gone. Uh, and like inflexible encoding schemes uh, would rate five and six. The, the proposals I have was what well, there are many proposals. Uh, first of all, we just dist to, to counter the, the rebuild stress problem, we can distribute the data um, similar to what ButterFS is already doing for RAID 1. So if you have a RAID 1 over, let's say, four volumes and write your data, you write part of your data, the first two volumes, then another part of the data in volumes three and four, uh, and so on. That gives it way less pressure on a single drive uh, to rebuild because you don't need to read all drives, just chunks from, from the drives uh, to rebuild your data. Then always copy and write to not have a, the problem with the rate write hole. Uh, introduce a, a stripe tree to be able to record where your data actually landed. Uh, first, write the data, then afterwards, write the metadata like we are anyway doing in the buffer test. So we are not doing um, ahead of time logging, but uh, order writes. And yeah, just on a pen for all zone data writes. And another thing that's more like very much in the future, but something I really want to have is like a building a framework with configurable parity algorithms to support RAID 5.6, but something like Read Solomon in the future or MDS codes, butterfly codes, whatever. Maybe even making like a small framework for people interested in encoding research to just easily plug it in, have some fun. So in the background uh, for data placement distribution, if you think of a traditional RAID 6 with two data blocks and two parity blocks, that's something, it would end up something like that on your drive. Um, and we are, if we're declustering it, obviously we need way more drives for that to work. Uh, but we could just- No, you don't. You just can do it. <laughs> well, you can do it with more drives. But let's put it that way. You don't need more drives, but you can uh, exploit more drives. Um, so if like this, this disk is dying, um, all we need to, to have is uh, read the, the other drives. So you don't need to read all drives. You could just like leave drives out and have way less stress uh, read, uh, reading the data to, to recreate your, your files. For, uh, for all that to work, um, we need a new tree um, in the file system, which can be kind of seen as the inverse of the, the free space tree, which um, locates the logical to physical to per volume physical placement uh, of each substrate. It's a kind of a rate journal, but not a write ahead journal. Um, like 
maps the like here uh, maps logical to the n logical start length to uh, all disks and the start offsets on disks. There's like a, if you have like yeah. Uh, one question. So if we are using uh, something like parity, erasure coding, it means that we increase write amplification. If we increase write amplification, we kill drives faster. What is the balance? No, you don't. You don't really you increase write amplification, you just write more data, which is the parity. It's different drives in that case. It's a write volume. It's not the same drive. So my point we can kill drive faster. No, you can. No, it's not what's happening here. If you write 4K to a file uh, with a RAID setup, you're going to write 4K to one device and something else for the parity to other devices. It's not killing the drive faster. It's the same per drive. It's just you're using more drives. That's all. It's red. You you need uh, more devices to get protection for your data. Um, so here's some, uh, like a small, uh, design map. So if you have like the file, it's a three <laughs> megabyte file extent, the, in the logical address space, uh, the stripe tree will do like the device and the, the, the stripe on device to physical mapping. And Stripe tree itself is keyed by uh, the logical and length tuple. It has an additional per file extent space consumption of 16 bytes. Not too bad. Could, like, we could probably shrink it, but it's overall not too bad. So for a three data and two parity array, we are consuming additional 80 bytes per extent and still can fit like 51 uh, nodes in the 4K sector. That's okay. Um, and so the the stripe tree uh, entries. Well, we we are creating the the key for the B tree uh, out of the disk byte number and uh, the disk num bytes of the file extent, which then maps to your stripe tree entry and that can be traversed to get your desired device ID and physical address, which is then populated back to the block mapping or the biomapping layer to, to do your reads. This has some advantages. Uh, it's a good address translation. We have a great journal. We can do audit updates. Uh, it's a bit similar to how we handle checksums. Uh, in ButterFS, we don't have any implicit connections needed anymore, uh, so we can do sonar pent. We can have n plus k erasure codes easily, but of course, it comes with a downside that we need additional metadata. Don't think it's too bad, but okay, we could merge on this metadata. But that would probably uh, give us problems in the way we are handling uh, bookend extents and uh, ref linking. So not sure if I want to go down that route. Then for the, the parity algorithms, that's more like future work. Haven't started anything in that terms yet. But um, having like a, a framework like we have with the, the checksum framework in, in ButterFS to, uh, and the compression framework, sorry, not the checksums, uh, is have like something that can create the parity information uh, on every write and read for you and verifies the parity Etc. Some status and a typo. Why well, I have a RAID 1 and RAID 0, actually, not RAID 1 and RAID 1. 
uh, implemented for data, for metadata, uh, RAID 1 already works out of the box because we're not using zone append and serializing all metadata writes uh, on a single mutex. RAID 0 would actually work out of the box as well. Um, but currently, it's not enabled as well. Um, the stuff that works is MakeFS, obviously. Um, then dumping the tree, and yeah, that's pretty small, no one can see it. Uh, dumping the tree, looking at the tree nodes uh, for, for debugging. Um, file system check on non-empty file systems. It's working. Scrap is working. Uh, read, write is mostly working. Well, let's put it that way. It's working minus bugs. <laughs> so, any questions? So, so the for the, what I understand, so the declustered parity was a new feature period for ButterFS, right? That's not existing right now, right? Exactly. And so, the the question I have is. And now, now you're you as you're adding the feature, you're you have the zoned mindset in mind as well, right? To make sure they're both compatible, and uh, is are there any pain points based on that, or or does it seem pretty from from your perspective versus like because I see like two two separate things like adding uh, the RAID support as like a, for feature parity, and then adding the new feature for ButterFS as a whole for the declustered, and so having that zoned. Uh, first mentality uh, has it made it more challenging? Do you think, or or it, or it, or it's just a design problem that could have made things easier for like uh, adding rate support for um, uh, ButterFS zoned, right? I, I guess you know, like I'm trying to separate the two a little bit, if that makes sense. Um, good question. Yeah. Um, actually, well, the. I don't think the rate support for the, the extra parity uh, algorithms, et cetera, would have, it doesn't really need zone support. Okay. It's, it's kind of obvious if you're having like zone drives and a lot of zone drives and big zone drives, mm -hmm. you don't really want to have like rate five or rate six. Yes. It's only one or two disks that can fail. Mm -hmm. So you want to have higher redundancy there. Okay. Oh, yeah. But it's still very useful for non zone yes, as yes, well. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I, I think the I think the, the, the zone aspect of, of our work doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. There are a few current cases for zones, but not that many in the end. Uh, there is one though that is going to be a bit tricky uh, is for ZNS drives if you have a limit on the number of active zones. Because then the block allocator becomes a bit more tricky because one block group is not just one zone. It may be multiple zones on multiple disks. So uh, managing the active zone state is a bit more difficult and that's something that we need to actually address. But that's more of the get the feature parity with, uh, of zone ButterFS um, done, not the have like distributed parity algorithms. Yeah, but we added the basic RAID 5 support to ButterFS years ago, right? Never solved the RAID, the, the right hole because we needed something like this. And so the fact that you're adding this to, to deals with zone devices is fixing up the problem we already had. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the benefit of, for non zone ButterFS that we are trying to, to get rid of the right hole. Yeah, and we always said at the time that we want to have sort of arbitrary placement of parity box. We don't want to be tied to this structure. Yeah. And this is, yeah. I have a simple question. I simply try to understand. If, for example, you lost a drive, so rebuilding will be done in the background, although we need to use file system check utility to recover. Uh, it's the... There is a it's, it's a repl butter effects replace yeah. utility, and I think it rebuilds in the background. Yes. Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. So actually, I, I have a similar question, actually. So 
my biggest pain point about the, how to deal with host managed drone device was that how to recover, how to you know match the right pointer after sudden power cut. So from very simple point, it's very you know a very important you know feature to recover all the data synced you know before the power cut. So FSEK can recover some of them, but if there's a something happen in terms of right pointer mismatch. So file system sees that oh this drone has this right pointer and April power cut. We may need to change the right pointer from file simple point. How to change that one? How to match that right pointer? Well, that's the reverse you have to do. Uh, that's the reverse you have to do. You have to trust the drive because the right pointer actually indicates you what data, data was actually properly flushed to media. So uh, that, yeah, that's the only that's that's your like boundary for your valid data. Whatever the file system meta they are saying, if there's a mismatch, mismatch, and the file system thinks the right pointer is further along, that's wrong. You have to reduce and then just discard whatever blocks. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The file, the meta I think uh, were used. So yeah, the first thing that we need to do in the FSDK is to you know, get the report jump and then check all the right pointer mm -hmm. between file system and device. And then if it is wrong, then probably we need to migrate some data from you know here to there to match the right. But that is just you know my um, naive mm -hmm. approach to match that one. Maybe I don't think you need to move anything. But uh, it, yeah, maybe it um, depends on yeah fire season. Question. Well, in that case, we're talking about a drive dying, for example, and oh, you, just, yeah, you plug in a different one and you reboot from from that. So. And the meta data is also protected by the right parity. So, so yeah, my my one concern is that you know I'm I was talking about the single device in that case. It is more you know simple um, problem in terms of power of recovery. But if in this case it's multiple in related system, so one device has a mismatched right pointer, and one device has a die, and then another device has another problem. So in at some point they need to match the right pointer to make the device uh, alive back least well I, I i would say that if, if you have a, a mismatch of a right pointer say when you mount uh, you could consider the drive dead and replace it in the right rebuild well just rebuild because again moving away that drive you don't lose anything because you can rebuild everything through uh, with data and parity Thanks. Uh, Johannes, I think you mentioned that you use read, modify, write. No. Is that correct? No. no? Cur currently, uh, RAID 5 uh, in fact, uses read, modify, write for subscribe, write. OK. What, do, what does your prototype use? My prototype for RAID 5 will probably just uh, zero fill the, uh, the stripe to the full length. OK. So then you're going to be dependent on relocation to empty? Yeah. The, OK. That was my question. Thanks. Right, that's, uh, thanks for the presentation.